Most websites nowadays are database driven. In this video, we're going to show you how to create a simple database driven website using the Python framework model. We'll also be using the Python Anywhere website, which will allow you to host MySQL and Bottle free of charge. We're going to use Python Anywhere because it has everything we need to do this project. Let's first click on pricing and sign up. Now we'll click on create a beginner account and let's create a username. I'm going to call my username bottle tutorial. I'll put in my email address and I'm going to create a Python anywhere password. And I'll agree to the terms and click register. We have the option to take the Python anywhere tour. I'm going to go ahead and just end the tour. Now what we need to do is we need to confirm our email address. So I'm going to go ahead and confirm my email address in another window. I've gone ahead and done that and you will get another email from Python Anywhere telling you that your email has been confirmed. And so I can see my username here. The next step is to create a MySQL database. So we click on the databases tab from the dashboard and now we need to create another password. Remember that you just created a Python Anywhere password. You're going to need to remember that but then we're going to create a MySQL password password as well. And I'm just going to call this my SQL password and I'm going to initialize MySQL. And you get this message that MySQL database is initializing and it'll take a minute or two. So we'll let that run. The process is completed. So a MySQL database has been initialized and it's created this default database. We're going to go ahead and start a console in MySQL so that we can run MySQL commands. All right, the console has been initialized. For this tutorial, we are following the instructions found on my GitHub site. And so if you scroll down uh, to the contents and click on create MySQL database, there is a script right here that we're going to copy. So I'm going to copy that script and I'm going to paste it into the MySQL console. And now I'm going to run that script and the query has run successfully. If you notice right here, it says that the query was OK, zero rows affected. If we want to see our new table, we can type the SQL command show tables. And there is our users table. The next step is to create our bottle web framework environment. So I'm going to click on the menu here in the upper right hand corner and then select web and I'm going to create a new web app. And you notice here that it's going to create us a app domain. My, it's just your Python uh, user account name dot Python anywhere dot com. And now I'll click next. We're going to use the bottle framework. It's the smallest framework and the easiest one to do something simple like what we're going to do today. I'm going to select the latest version of Python, which is at this 3.9 and this is showing me where my bottle application is going to be placed. So I'll click next and this is the nice thing about Python Anywhere. It'll set up the entire framework for you. Okay, so now I have a bottle website and if I right click here on this and open that in a new tab and it just says hello from bottle. So when I type in my web address right now all I have is just a simple hello from bottle. Now that we've created our web application environment, we can scroll down and look at some of the configuration. So the source code is going to be in home bottle tutorial my site and this is our working directory. But we also have this whiskey configuration file. Let's take a look at that to better understand how our bottle application will work. Notice here that we're importing elements of the bottle framework, but then this right here is telling us where our project home is going to be. And we know that's going to be home bottle tutorial my site. We could change that if we wanted to. Then if you look down here, it tells us where are our templates going to be. So template directory is going to be in views. So it's going to be in home bottle tutorial my site slash views. And then right here from bottle app import application. We're going to reference this later on in our tutorial. And so I wanted to let you see where this import is coming from. Now I'm going to just go back to web. I'm not going to save that file. And you can see that we could go to our directory here, our my site directory, one of two ways. We could click right here to go to the directory or at any point we can click on files. 
Here is my site, and this is bottleapp.py. This is the controller for our project. The database that we created in MySQL is the model, and bottle app pie is the controller and you can see that it just was one simple route so when you're at the root of the application it's going to run this function and just show hello world to the screen well we're going to do something a little bit more advanced than that let me click on my site what we're going to do is we need to create a directory called views to put our templates in so right here I'll type views and it will create a new directory and now I'm in that directory we need need to create two template files. The first file is called create underscore user dot tpl. And this is a template that we'll use to insert records into our users table. We'll click new file and we can see that we've got this empty file. If we go back to the readme that I've created for this tutorial, we're going to copy and paste this code into that template file. So I'll paste this in and then I'm going to click the save command and now I'll go back to the views directory. I need to create another template so I'm looking at the readme instructions again and this one is going to be called show users. I'm going to copy the code for show users and let's create that template file. I'm going to click new file and now I'm going to paste the code for that template file and click save. I'm going to click on my site now because what I want to do is I want to edit this bottle app pie controller. Right now the default all it does is just says hello from bottle. But what we want it to do is we want it to to create some functions that will insert data into our users table and retrieve those users. So going back to the readme file, if you scroll down here on number 35, we've got another code snippet. Now this one's longer. You can just click right here and it will copy all the code in that code snippet. That's a little more efficient than dragging uh, down through it because this one's quite a bit longer. So now that I've copied that, I'm going to select the existing text and just click paste and now click save. So let's just briefly look at what this controller does. We need to create a connection to our MySQL database. And if you look here, we have to make some changes to the host. So between these greater than and less than signs, we need to put our Python Anywhere account name that we created initially. Mine is called Bottle Tutorial. So I'm just gonna replace that with Bottle Tutorial. My username, same thing. So I'll just put that right here. And in the password, I'm going to put the password that I created for MySQL. And then the database is the Python Anywhere account name dollar sign default. So I'm going to put that in. Okay, then we set up what's called a cursor. This MySQL connection reads in the DB config file, and then we create a cursor which will allow us to run commands. So notice here, MySQL, MySQL.cursor, and we're just creating this uh, object to hold that. And then we have some route definitions. So if I go to create user, I'm going to use the get method. I'm going to get the values from the form, and then I'm going to run this insert statement and pop it with two variables which are coming from right here the first name and the last name now this is not a course on doing web applications but I just wanted to give you a basic run through so you can see how a MySQL database might interact with a website okay and then we go ahead and we execute this statement and then if it's successful we return some information if it's the first time we just go straight to the template and then here is our route for just the root of the application and it's going to run this cursor here and just do a select star from users and then it's going to show us those values in the show user template. Now remember before when I was showing the whiskey configuration file there was that application variable this is where it's used the default app. I'm going to go ahead and save that. Now what we can do is let's click on the menu and go back to web. Now whenever we make a change to our code in our web application, we need to click this reload in order for the changes to be seen. So I'm going to click that. Now I'll right click on this website address and open it in. And there is the 
root of the website which lists the users. We don't have any users right now, so let's go ahead and add one. So I'll click on add new user and you notice this goes to the create user function and I'll type in a name, Julio Iglesias and click the save button and I get the message, a new user was created with ID2. Uh, let's add another user. Um, how about James to Spain? Now, you can see that was successfully created. Let's click on show all users and we can see that the system has retrieved our two users. If you get an error when running your program, what you'll want to do is scroll down here to the error log. I did have some errors earlier. You may have this. I had an access denied and what I found was that I had mistyped the, the MySQL password and so once I changed that and refreshed, I was able to make the application work. Just remember, after making any changes to any of your templates, you must click the reload in order for the changes to be seen.